here we have our fabric. You need three different kinds of fabric. You need one for the bodice, one for the shorts, and you need lining for the bodice. Here are the templates, which are already cut to size. I'm making the size two. For the crotch cutout, since there's lines on the template, you can fold it down uh, according to the size that you're making. Pretty easy. To cut out the bodice pieces, front and back, you simply fold over your fabric and you place each of the templates right along on the fold. You pin in place and then you cut around each template. To cut out the lining pieces for the bodice, simply place the front bodice onto the lining piece fabric. The reason why I'm doing it like this is because I will get the exact same shape um, of the uh, lining that I need in order to make the bodice look perfectly matching. And you do the same with the um, back bodice. To cut out the shorts pieces, you fold your shorts fabric over as I have done with these two pieces. The fold side is on this side and then you place the crotch cut out onto the fabric like this. Pin in place and cut around it. This is how the two shorts pieces look. The corners are cut out for the front and the back side crotch. This is the other piece. Here are my two strap pieces. Okay, to sew our straps, you place a um, safety pin into each corner over here and over here. This will allow you to turn the strap around much better. Make sure you're at least an inch, an inch and a half away from both edges. Okay, next step is to sew the straps. You fold the strap over lengthwise like this, pin it in place and sew around the edges. I have left an opening of about three inches for turning the strap around. You see both safety pins right here. They will help you turn the strap around. Make sure you clip all four corners. Now we're going to turn the straps around and you just reach in here. You grab your safety pin and you carefully pull it through like this. Repeat with the other side and then press everything in place. And then you should have this. When you press it, make sure that you turn the uh, seam from the opening in so that it completely matches and lines up with the rest. Then you can top stitch all the way around your strap and repeat with the second piece. Here are my two finished tie pieces and I have stopped top stitched all the way around with a seam allowance of an eighth of an inch. In this step, we're sewing the bodice piece together. Place the front bodice pieces with right sides together, pin in place and sew only the curved top edge with a seam allowance of a quarter of an inch. Repeat with the back bodice piece and make sure that the print direction is going down. Then pin in place and sew the top edge. After you have sewn the top edges of both bodice pieces, now trim down the seam allowance halfway. So if you have sewn with the seam allowance of a quarter of an inch, try to be exact and cut it down to about an eighth of an inch. Same thing with the back bodice piece. Now this step is very important because you don't want puckers right where the uh, lower area is of the bodice piece. Take your scissors and grab your bodice piece like this and cut a very tiny slit right here and make sure not to cut through the thread. I have turned my bodice pieces with right sides out and before I press the pieces I make sure that the seam is completely exposed and not tucked in a little bit because otherwise you'll achieve a very uneven look. And you press the whole bodice piece in place, make sure that it's nicely curved on the edges. Repeat the step with the back bodice piece. For this step I have brought in my cutting mat and simply because I can measure better um, to align the straps, which we're going to sew on now. Uh, center your bodice piece with the lowest uh, dip right here on a um, line like this and make sure that the top edges also hit the next line or the next second line. Place one strap piece right above the bodice, angle it a little bit towards the inside or middle 
and then um, place it onto the bodice like this and center it with the straps and the highest point of the bodice. This step is very important. That's why I am doing a close up of this one here. Make sure that the bottom left corner of the strap does not exceed the bodice top edge. I have a distance of about a quarter of an inch. Pin the strap in place with three pins and leave only a very little bit of the pin sticking out on the bottom and most of it on the top. This is important later once we sew the strap on. When you place your second strap onto the other side, you can compare the distance on your cutting mat to make sure that you're completely equal with this side. And then watch this little corner right here so it doesn't exceed the bodice edge. Once you pin on your other strap, you can use your cutting mat, mat once again to compare that the distance is the same. Okay, it's time to top stitch the bodice. Turn it around so right sides are facing. Start right here and sew with a seam allowance of an eighth of an inch all across the straps and end right here. When you sew over the straps, make sure to sew very carefully and take out one pin after the other. Makes it easier for sewing. After top stitching, turn the bodice around and look at your stitches back here. This is completely unnoticeable and nice and neatly stitched on. Now we're working on the back bodice piece. We want to sew the lines for the elastic. Place your bodice down with the right sides. Place it onto a cutting board so you can align the top edge. Then place your ruler right about half an inch from the top edge. Draw a line across with your fabric marker or pencil. Set your ruler half an inch lower and a line as well right here and draw your second line. I'm drawing my last line and for size 2 you have to draw one, two, three, four, five lines. And below here, you should have about an inch of space left. Then I went ahead and I sewed um, along the lines, as you can see here. So I have one, two, three, four, five casings for the elastic later on. Now trim off all the loose um, threads right here and on the other side. Okay, the next step we have cut our elastic pieces to size. I have five pieces right here. Um, get a safety pin which is small enough to fit into the half inch casing and two straight pins. Fasten the safety pin to one end of one elastic strip and feed it right into the first casing on top. So you keep feeding it and before the end of the elastic piece slips right into the casing, take one safety pin and secure it right like this. And then keep feeding the safety pin until you reach the other side. And then secure this piece with another safety pin. This is how it looks now. I have both pins on each side. And you could normally continue feeding your elastic through and pinning them. But uh, when you get back into when you get back to sewing, then you might poke yourself. So I suggest sew the elastic to the bodice right here first until you continue with the second row. Don't forget to remove the safety pin before you go to your machine, and then you stitch down the elastic right here with the seam allowance of a quarter of an inch, and repeat the same right here. My back bodice piece is done. I have sewed all the elastic on, as you can see here, and I'm going to clear the edges um, from all the ruffled area just a little bit, the, um, the gathered area from the elastic. This helps later um, with sewing on the bodice piece. So I have brought in my front bodice and we want to sew both pieces together. What you do, you align the back bodice piece with the right side matching uh, onto the left edge and then you pin this in place 
I'll just put one pin just for showing you. When you're done, you'll repeat the same on the other side. Both sides are done. I have overcasted the raw edges, which already allowed me to trim off some of the um, elastic that was peeking out. And later on, we'll finish the sides by top stitching, but not just yet. A very cute way to embellish a basic front bodice of a uh, garment is to add an applique or a little pocket. And for this, I have planned this little um, heart shape pocket. Uh, all you want to do is cut out the heart shape of the size that you desire and fold your fabric piece over sideways. Fabric direction is going down. In my case, I have polka dots, so it doesn't matter. Pin the template to both layers of fabric and cut around it. Here are my two heart shaped pieces. If you are doing an applique, of course you don't need the second piece. You would just apply adhesive to the back, uh, iron it onto the front bodice and then uh, use your preferred stitch around the edges. For our little pocket, um, you want to place both heart shapes with right sides together, pin in place and start sewing all the way around and leave a small opening of about two, two and a half inches so you can turn the heart around later. Here's a better view close up of the pocket. I have sewn from here with back stitching, went all the way around and then I stopped a little bit further going up about an eighth of an inch and I um, back stitched this one to the end. So we have an opening of, of about this much. Trim off about half of the seam allowance. I have already started here and I'm going to continue all the way around the heart shape and I will end right here where my opening starts or right before. And when you are done with that, then you cut a slit right here to prevent puckering later on. Okay, my seam allowance is cut down and I stopped right here. See, this little edge of the old seam allowance will remain. Now it's time to turn the pocket around. And because it's pretty tricky to turn such a small uh, shape around correctly and make it look nice like a heart later on, like an even looking heart, you want to make sure to press the seams like this and um, necessarily a row between your fingers so you have the entire seam exposed and that way it makes for a cute heart shape. My heart is pressed and it looks nice and round everywhere without sharp edges or wonky looking edges and right here you can see it has absolutely no puckers. That was because we cut a tiny slit into the seam allowance. Now we're getting ready to pin it to the bodice. That looks already cute. All right, we're getting ready to pin this little heart. We can leave the top uh, corners or round edges open and we want to pin and sew about from here on all the way over the opening. See, here's the opening. We don't have to close it until just now. We sew all the way up and stop at the same area. Okay, my heart is sewn on and it became a pocket. I forgot to mention one important step and I hope you're not mad at me. Um, please mark the height of both sides where you want to start and where you want to end so that way you have an uh, equal straight line across and those um, upper round areas are not flapping too awkwardly. Hey, guess what? I forgot one more important thing. The bodice is done. Yay! Okay, we're getting ready to sew our shorts pieces together. Place both shorts pieces with right sides together and pin along the crotch curve on this side and on the other side. Okay, both sides are sewn and serged. You can also use a zigzag stitch, of course. Position the crotch seams into the center of the shorts and then they look almost like real shorts. And now would be the time if you want to add snap button tape for easy diaper changes, you could do this now. I have an additional tutorial that is attached to the template. 
turn your shorts with the right sides out and now we're getting ready to gather the top edge. Um, first you want to take a couple of safety pins and mark the side seams of the shorts. Just place the safety pin one here and one on the other side. Here are my two safety pins. Make sure you're about an, uh, an inch away from the top edge. Now we're getting ready to sew a gathering stitch along the top edge of the shorts. I usually start in one of the center seams. I start here and then I go all the way around the top edge until I reach the front again. With the seam allowance of a quarter of an inch, run your gathering stitch all the way around with a moderately tight tension and the longest stitch length. Here's another adorable embellishment tip. Our Fiji sunsuit would look adorable with the uh, added pom-pom trim. What do you think? Of course, this step is optional. You want to turn the bodice with wrong sides out and place it down like this. So you want to see well, the um, side edge. Take your trim, turn it upside down so the pom-poms are facing upwards and insert it into the bodice as like this, as shown like this. Let the trim hang over the seam, the side seam, about like this. Make sure you're not sewing like right over a pom-pom. You can always trim it off later, but I'll go right in between the pom-poms and I'll pin it in place. I'm pinning this in place and I will keep, continue to pin all the way until I'm completely done with the whole bodice. And the trim has to hang down about halfway like this. And just in case you're wondering why I'm pinning this with the bodice uh, right side in, inside, is because so I can see that I'm keeping the same distance for the, for the trim. Okay, I'll keep pinning like this. Oh, that took a while. I'm done pinning and now I can cut off my trim. Cut it about half, half an inch further than where your, your side seam is right here. Very carefully turn your bodice with right side out and trim off the overlapping area here from the fringe. I have already trimmed off um, a pom-pom. Make sure that, these, that the uh, end and the beginning, beginning and end, of the trim are overlaying like this. And now it's time to sew the trim on. Take the bodice to your machine, insert it into your machine so that the pom-poms are facing to the left. I went ahead and sewed my trim on. I have some tips for you. Um, you start at the back, which is elasticized. So this bottom area here wrinkles up quite a bit. Um, first of all, take a zipper foot to sew because the uh, pom-poms will get in the way all the time with a regular foot. Then since we have pinned the trim so it hangs over, as you can see here, uh, very nicely, you want to sew very close to the edge of the uh, upper portion of the trim. But don't exceed where you only sew the little um, threads right here that are holding the pom-poms. It is much easier once you reach the front part of the bodice, as you can see, nice and neat and pretty much a straight line of stitches. Once you stop, once you reach the end, make sure that the uh, trim pieces overlap slightly, just like that. I have turned my bodice with uh, right sides in just to show you how the stitches look from the back. And it does not have to be completely even, just make sure that um, you won't have fabric so close to the stitches that it will pull out before you attach the shorts. We are getting ready to sew the bodice and the shorts together. Place the shorts with right sides out underneath the bodice, which is also with right sides out. Here are my uh, short side seam markers. Flip the bodice with wrong sides out and take your shorts, turn it around 
and insert it into the bodice. Align the sides um, of the bodice with the two uh, short side markers. Start by pinning the sides first. Remove the safety pin from the shorts before you pin. Then pin um, side seam of bodice to the shorts pieces where the um, safety pin was. And make sure you place the pin on the um, side of the bodice. I have pinned my two side seams. Now I'm going to start with the middle or continue with the middle. Um, find your uh, center seam of the shorts and place it to where the center of the bodice is and place the pin. Turn your sun suit upside down and now we have the back of the bodice which you want to pin to the back seam of the shorts. Again, align the seam with the center of the uh, bodice piece and then place your pin. In order to pin the rest, you want to pull the area just a little bit in between the center and the side seams and shove the little pom-poms down and um, make sure that both edges are lining up. And then keep pinning. Place a pin every inch or inch and a half. When you're done pinning, it should look like this. Now we're getting ready to sew. Take this to your machine, insert it like this, and start sewing to the right of the stitches that you sewed the trim on. Here are my stitches in orange, and start sewing slightly above maybe an eighth of an inch to the right of these stitches. I'm done sewing, and as you can see, I have just a little bit um, stitched over the original line where I sewed on the pom-pom trim, but obviously it was not enough, and I'll show you why. Okay, here's my pom-pom trim, but as you can see, there is um, uneven, uneven trim showing. Right here is too much and here is not enough. And I did not use a zipper foot as I have instructed earlier, I should have. So now I'm gonna go redo this with my zipper foot. Problem solved. I used my zipper foot and I was able to get a little bit closer to where the pom-poms are on the inside. You can see I have now three lines of stitches, but um, at least the outcome is gonna be much, much better. And here is the sunsuit from the right side and the pom-poms are hanging nicely and this little bit that is in between each of the pom-poms um, that is just okay it kind of peaks a little bit but um, otherwise it looks great now we are just left to top stitch here is uh, the view of my sewing machine and my zipper foot and I wanted to show you real quick how it looks once you um, when you top stitch it. The pom-poms are laying nicely on the side like this and then you just slowly top stitch along. So the top stitching is done and all there is left to do on the bodice is to top stitch the side seams. You want to fold the seam towards the front because you have still a little area of the um, elastic and otherwise it'll be too bulky. Just fold it to the front and then top stitch right along here. Our last step will be to finish the leg hems. You want to search the bottom edge of each leg and then fold up the bottom hem half an inch and press in place. Repeat with the other leg. Turn the sun suits around so that the wrong sides are out and fold down the leg hem like this. Then pin the crotch area, which is this area right here, pin this in place, sew and hem. Here it's sewn and um, overcast or surged. Now you refold your hem like this and you can pin or go directly to sewing. You start right here at the seam about 
um, a quarter of an inch next to the seam. You sew all the way around and end a quarter of an inch before the seam. The leg hems are sewn and I left a small opening right here. This is where I'm going to insert the elastic later. But the shorts look cute like this without elastic. So if you prefer to have um, a less bubbly look on the legs, then you can most certainly do that. Now it's time to insert the elastic. Take your safety pin, secure it to one end of the elastic and feed it right into the casing. And once you are all the way through and this little piece wants to slip in, use um, a straight pin to secure it. Okay, this is the little end of my elastic and before it slips into the casing, I just pin it in place and then I can continue feeding the elastic through until the safety pin comes out the other end or the same opening. Okay, here's now my safety pin. I pull out a little bit more elastic. I remove the safety pin and then I take this pin, overlap the elastic about half an inch, maybe three quarters, maybe a uh, um, little bit less and pin it in place and then hand stitch right across um, the pin. All right, I have stitched the elastic ends together. I overlapped them about half an inch and stitched the elastic together with at least 10 to 12 stitches and um, knotted the thread on the um, underside. And now it's time to close the casing. You just push the elastic in like this and stitch the opening closed with your machine. I have already done this and this is how it looks. Make sure you top, you um, backstitch the beginning and the end. Here's my other leg and that's pretty much it. Now we have one more last step for the sunsuit, which is optional. Okay, before we wrap up this free video tutorial, I have an, another last embellishment tip for you. It is done with a piece of elastic, maybe about two to two and a half inches. And we're going to um, ruche the front part of the shorts, which is going to look like this. I have turned my shorts or uh, sunsuit with um, wrong sides out, and this is how we want to sew the piece of elastic on here. First, measure the um, the width of the shorts and mark about halfway up, which in my case would be 275. So I place a pin right here. Now take your elastic piece and repin where you have first marked and let the elastic hang down a little bit over the stitches about like this. As a little help, so you won't pin through the other side of the shorts or the leg, um, you can use your uh, ruler or anything, uh, another hard surface, and um, then it's easier to place the pin. I'm going to place another pin right into the center of the elastic. And to do so, I stretch the elastic, hold it with my fingers, and then place the pin um, like this. This is a little tricky, but it should work just like this. Now it's time to sew the elastic on. Take the shorts to your machine, insert the shorts from either side, uh, whatever um, you can work with best, and start sewing either from here or from here with back stitching and hold it like this, stretch it out. Here's my machine view. I inserted the sunsuit from the top and I start stitching right here with back stitching about three to four times. And then once I get sewing, I stretch this slightly and then I start sewing. I can't show you the sewing part because I am actually holding my um, camera. Okay, I hope this is um, visible enough. I am sewing while I stretch the whole thing with my left hand, but it seems to be working. And then slowly sew along the elastic and um, take out the pin before you sew over the pin right here. And once you once you reach the end, just um, top stitch or um, I'm sorry, back stitch about three four times, and then cut the threads. This is how it looks sewn on, nice and ruched. Now we want to repeat the same on the other leg, 
and therefore you would want to be very um, um, thoroughly to measure exactly the distance from one elastic uh, to the other where you, where you want to sew the other one on so it'll be even. Okay, second side is done and I double check the distance from both elastics and um, everything looks great. And um, as an alternative, you can of course use elastic thread and uh, you wouldn't have to uh, pin the elastic and it's probably a little bit softer on the inside. Our Fiji sunsuit is done. It features a cute heart-shaped pocket, added pom-pom trim and ruching on the legs. The back is elasticized with regular band elastic, very comfy to wear. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you will make a bunch of Fiji sunsuits this summer. And please share the pictures with us on Facebook or email them to me directly. I would love to see what you make. Until then, bye-bye.